it was no secret that the New York Giants would go out and find quarterback help. And Joe Shane did just that on the second day of free agency. Well, at least the unofficial period. What's going on, everyone? Nick Bellotto with Big Blue View here to go over Drew Locke. Yes, that is right. Drew Locke, who signed with the New York Giants on a one-year, $5 million, fully guaranteed contract. 27-year-old former Missouri Tiger is now a member of the New York Giants. And the Giants, look, they're picking high in the draft. And I don't think this addition of Drew Locke precludes them from selecting whoever is the apple of Brian Dable and Joe Shane's eye. Shane and Dable may not plan on selecting this high too often. And for their case, if they do, they're more than likely going to be out of a job. So if they love someone and they could trade up just a little bit or if someone falls to them, they'll likely select them. And Locke's presence now on this roster does not affect that. And also, there's a lot that could happen from now till the regular season and from now to the draft. So let's just buckle up. Locke spent the last two seasons in Seattle, but only saw the football field in 2023. His first regular season snaps actually came against the New York Giants in week four. He had 85 total dropbacks last season, completing 48 passes, a 63.2% completion rate for 543 yards, which is an average of 7.1 yards per attempt. He threw three touchdowns and three interceptions and suffered six sacks. Drew Locke is a good athlete who is not scared to uncork the football. But historically, he struggles with decision-making errors and inconsistent accuracy. 17 of his 76 passing attempts were screens or passes behind the line of scrimmage last year. Locke's throwing mechanics and recognition aren't always fundamentally sound. His delivery time is noticeably late. He fails to step into some throws when he seemingly could, which leads to underthrown deep passes. And he doesn't always orient his feet, hips, eyes, and shoulders to target, resulting in short hopping passes on short throws to the flat. Locke definitely has that F it, he's down there somewhere mentality. Doing that in 1v1 situations, it's not a big deal. It's not terrible. But when it's three over two, defensive advantage, it's hard to excuse. I'll say this though. I watched every pass of Drew Locke from 2023 and his play under pressure wasn't the indictment on his quarterbacking skills that I remember from his time in Denver. I also loved his moxie in the Seahawks come from behind victory over Philadelphia. That was before the Eagles sucked, too. He found Jackson Smith and Jigba in the back of the end zone for the dub. I understand why some fall in love with Locke's traits. The kid can put zip on the football. He flashes precision as a passer, can run a quick game offense, and offenses can get him on the move because he's athletic enough to do so. That athletic ability also helped him to improve in managing the pocket, as we'll see throughout this video. So let's break down some of these plays. You'll likely hear a noticeable dip in my audio, but I want to draw on some of these plays, and the platform I was using before doesn't let me draw on them. And I really like this play from Drew Locke. We talk a lot about quarterbacks at Big Blue View who can work the backside dick from a three by one set. And that's exactly what Drew Locke does here. You can see you have the lone receiver on the back side and then three to the front side. And Drew Locke is going to target this area of the field in a tight window to locate and find Tyler Lockett. And you're gonna see just that. He's gonna to look to the front side, look to the front side. This is a quarters coverage from the Philadelphia Eagles. And then he goes to the back side. And once this defender right here is influenced by Noah Fant's route towards that hash, Drew Locke knows he's going to have this open window that he's about to hit, and he zips the football in right in between two safeties who gain too much depth in their drop. And we're going to see that same exact thing from the end zone angle. Middle fourth safety initially, checking to see if that middle fourth safety drops down, which he does not. And he's also paying attention to that underneath defender that I just highlighted before. So once Locke realizes he doesn't love exactly what he's seeing, he flips his hips, gets completely oriented to Jackson Smith and Jigba, that is not Tyler Lockett, and then fires the football. And look at the zip on that ball. Hits him right in stride. That is a beautiful pass and a beautiful play, a beautiful read from Drew Locke against the Philadelphia Eagles last year towards the beginning of the game. On this play, we're going to see a two high shell from Philadelphia. So it's cover two. You're going to get man coverage underneath. So it's not just typical country drop zone cover two. It's man coverage underneath. And Drew Locke is going to diagnose that. And he's going to understand that DK Metcalf, even though he's going up against James Bradbury in inside leverage, is going to win because it's trail. So James Bradbury assumes trail technique with Reed Blankenship over the top. So what DK Metcalf is going to do, he is going to stack James Bradbury. Bradbury is letting him do that. 
and then he is going to act like he's going out. You can see right here, he looks with this pivot, like he's going to run some sort of route out this way. That is not what's going to happen, though. He is going to break back to the inside, and Drew Locke already knows that this is going to be open because this safety is at such depth. So Locke fires his football, and he does it right as DK Metcalf is coming out. Like I said, Locke, you're going to see throughout this video, Locke is a little bit late with his release. It's one of my issues with him. But on this play, the release happens. You can see he's rearing back right at this moment, right as DK Metcalf is going into his break. So he's throwing with some anticipatory skills, and he hits DK Metcalf. He could have hit him in stride. This pass isn't all that accurate. If you hit him in stride, DK Metcalf might have been able to do DK Metcalf things and run all, do all that kind of stuff. That didn't necessarily happen, but still it's a completed pass and a first down on a third and long situation. And we can see it from this angle as well. Drew Locke knew exactly where to go with the football at this time based on the coverage. Once man was confirmed, his eyes were right to that portion of the field, seeing the depth of the safety once the too high shell was also confirmed. I don't know if I'm going to break down every single one of these plays in detail like this, but again, we're going to have a too high shell pre-snap. And then what happens? It's going to rotate down to single high. So you're going to get rotation from the boundary safety downward. And then you're going to have post-rotation from the field side safety. And this confirms to Drew Locke that he's going to have a one-on-one -on -one up towards the sideline to hit DK Metcalf. And Drew Locke, with great timing, finds this. This isn't a two-minute drill. This is with the Seattle Seahawks driving down the football field. So you need a big play if you're Seattle. And that's exactly what Drew Locke sparked for him here. And you can see as he catches this pass that he looks to the center of the field, gets the post safety to rotate, confirms that it is going to be single high, 1v1. And then he, once he throws this football, he has to get it there before that safety, Sidney Brown, gets over to the top. Sidney Brown, he's a rookie. He's got some range. He flips his hips, he gets over the top, and DK Metcalf, look, DK Metcalf, sometimes when you have a great receiver, you got to trust that great receiver, and that great receiver made a great play on the football, but Drew Locke still put it in a position for DK Metcalf to make the great play on it. So that was a really nice play, but not nearly as nice as some of the plays we're about to see right here. This is a beautiful pass to win the football game by Drew Locke. Again, one-on-one, -on -one, it's going to be, look, this could be a cover four, right? This could be a cover two shell, but... Philadelphia, at this point, they were running a decent amount of man coverage. So you have, again, man coverage with rotation down. You can see how this safety is now going to rotate down. What does that confirm to Drew Locke? As we saw in the previous play, it confirms you're going to have a single high post safety rotating this way. There's no way he's going to be able to get over the top to locate Jackson Smith and Jigba against this cornerback. I kind of forget exactly who that is. So Drew Locke catches the football. He slowly rotates his eyes in this direction and knows that he's going to have that one-on-one -on -one now that the safety rotated downward. And look at this pass. This is just precision. That is a perfect pass that James Bradbury, of course, could not get anywhere near. And I want to watch Drew Locke's eyes here and exactly what he does. He catches the football. So the stripe of his helmet is directly down the field, kind of down the hash, seeing exactly what is going on. So he's not looking necessarily at where James Bradbury is, but he's using his peripheral vision, I would imagine. So he catches the ball, and then this is where he orients his hips, knows exactly where he's going. Now that Sidney Brown is dropping down to buzz downward, not going to be too high shell, confirmed 1v1, just throw a beautiful pass, and look at that touch right over the top. So Jackson Smith and Jigba can run underneath it. It's towards the pylon. It's not towards the middle of the field. So only Jackson Smith and Jigba can make a play on this football. And that is exactly what you want from your quarterback. Plays like that. And these are the flashes that I talk about with Drew Locke. Drew Locke has these throughout his tape. We're going to see some more throws where it's just really well-placed balls. Now this one, it's trusting DK Metcalf again, but this is a back shoulder throw where he has to maneuver around the pocket to find DK Metcalf again in a one-on-one -on -one situation where one safety stays downward and that confirms the 1v1 up top. Fire the football, Drew Locke. Again, I love how he maneuvered the pocket there. It wasn't anything too extravagant, but hey, you know, you want somebody to be aware of his surroundings and someone who can uncork a football like this. Not necessarily from the far hash, but you can see how this isn't like the best. He doesn't really step into it too well. Like he, he has that one step and he kind of throws it. And mechanically, Drew Locke isn't necessarily a, a, um, a stellar type of quarterback, but he gets the football there. And DK Metcalf makes a nice play on it. You see, step up. Keep your eyes on Metcalf, and look, that's back shoulder and away from Fathia. Now, 
or wh whatever number that is, number 20. Now, if 20 was a little bit more aware and a better coverage, I'm sure that pass would have been knocked down, but it's still put away from DK Metcalf and allowing Metcalf to make this catch to secure a touchdown. Now, again, against the San Francisco 49ers, what do we have here? We're going to have an empty set, which are going to have too high initially, but this safety is staying kind of close to the hash. So you need to get this football out very quickly. This is a tight window because Fred Warner, I believe that is, is one of the best linebackers in the National Football League. So you're going to have a little double move here to get Fred Warner to sink down. You can see that right at this moment. And then I believe that is Tyler Lockett. He's just going to go into this void. But this void isn't really all that big since this safety at this point is going to crash down on it. So Drew Lockett needs to fire that football. And Lock gets it there. And what does he do? He puts it to the back shoulder of that safety. So that safety, I think that's Sean Gibson, cannot make a play on it, right? Like watch. Back shoulder, shielding Tyler Lockett from this safety who was hovering around that hash. That's good accuracy. That is awareness. That's knowing where to optimize your, your receiver and also how to not get your receiver killed. I wish this was more consistent throughout Drew Locke's tape regarding the accuracy. Now, he doesn't necessarily get his receivers killed all that often, but this is a layered pass that has to get over two obstacles, right? You have Fred Warner, one of the best coverage linebackers in the league. This is a good pocket, mind you, right? But you have to put enough touch on it to get over the top of Fred Warner, which he does, while also positioning it towards the outside of Tyler Lockett. So Tyler Lockett doesn't get his head taken off by that safety who's hovering around the hash. And that's exactly what Drew Locke does. And that's a very nice pass to Tyler Lockett. Again, he only played in, what, four games this year. He only had four different appearances. Didn't start all four of the games. But there are some plays on this tape that you're going to see, and you're going to be like, oh, Drew Locke, who would have thought, right? Now we're going to have this play against the Eagles where... I just appreciate the zip on the pass. That's why I included it here. Yeah, Hassan Reddick dropping into a coverage, so not necessarily a natural coverage player, but a good enough one. But that zip, that zip, fire it out of his hand. It might have been a little bit late. It's hard to tell. And that's something that you're going to see from Drew Locke, as I've mentioned. But yeah, there's some tape here that you can go through and you can be like, I appreciate that. And this is, this is one, this is a beautiful route by Lockett who I understand now why he got paid after going through some Seattle Seahawks tape. I thought maybe he was on the back end of his career, and he is, but I thought maybe he was a declining asset and might not offer as much as, as um, he used to, but he's still pretty damn good as a route runner, right? And they got some weapons up there in Seattle. But you're going to see Lockett inward stem and then break back to the outside. Lockett wins on the route. Drew Locke puts a beautiful pass out there, but I love how Locke maneuvered the pocket. This is what I was talking about a little bit earlier, right? He's a mobile guy. He can navigate the pocket in these muddy areas. But here, he feels the pressure and he steps up to the point where he brings his entire body up and then resets himself into the pocket, right? So now he's resetting and he has to get rid of the football quickly because it's a muddy pocket. Like I said, pressure's not as bad as I remembered from his days in Denver when he was throwing like four or five interceptions against the Raiders, whatever the hell it was, right? Like, look, that is a very nice play right there. Tommy DeVito had a play like this, and we, like, ushered, ushered praise on him, right? Like, this one, whoop. Now, reset your base, fire the football, look at the location. Hitting Tyler Lockett as he's outside the numbers, basically in stride and away from the defender to allow Tyler Lockett to not get killed. Now, I'm just going to run. I'm not going to overly break down his quick game, but he can run a quick game offense. We're going to see some inaccuracy a little bit later. This, this play necessarily isn't uh, him operating within the confines of the quick game, but it does show that he can break quick game when it's not there. This is a quick game concept. This is a simple just curl flat where you're going to have the tight end, 89, I think that's Will Disley. He's going to run from the H-back position to the flat. Hassan Reddick matches him. And then you have the curl, who is 2v1. Who are you throwing the football to? This is a tight man coverage that Philadelphia is running, and Drew Locke has nowhere to go with the football. So what does he do? He jumps into the pocket, Attempts to reset himself, keeps his eyes upfield, even though the pressure's starting to get there, and then he just tosses the football to Kenneth Walker, and Kenneth Walker picks up a couple yards. Not a crazy play, but at least it shows, hey, when it's not there, you're not going to force it in a quick game situation. You're not going to make a dumb play all the time. And you're going to find a way to complete passes when they're there. Find your check down, get your check down, live to fight another day. Here I just like the accuracy on some of these passes. These are just taking advantage of off-leverage the wide receiver just runs an out route, and you can see outside shoulder, pick up a couple yards. And here's that play from the angle that should have been first. I'm going to have to yell at my producer. His name is Nick Filato on that one. But 
That's a far hash throw from Drew Locke. Not necessarily easy. We don't see the Giants quarterbacks making throws like this too often, right? Even though it's only, what, like 10 yards down the football field? But from the far hash, you got to put zip, you put a, put it on a line, right? And Drew Locke can do that. He said he got some mustard. He can put it on a line. Here you're going to see another optimized ball placement from Drew Locke, right? And this one, this is really, really quick because this is inside leverage. You have a cornerback who is inside leverage and he's off by a considerable margin. So Drew Locke recognizes this. He doesn't even need to finish his three-step drop. He catches it and he turns quickly, understands the coverage, understands the leverage. This is a boundary side throw, so it's not like the football is going to be traveling as far as it did in the previous one. And he just fires the football towards the outside shoulder of DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf catches it, gets up the football field. Like this extra 12 yards or whatever DK Metcalf ends up picking up, that's caused because of Drew Locke's precision there and his placement on the outside shoulder. Those are the types of throws you want your quarterback to make to allow your receiver to pick up yards after the catch and to keep him away from a cornerback who is in inside leverage. Also, the recognition, just noticing like, hey, I see the leverage here. I know DK is going to be open. Let me find him. And here he's just throwing a nice line. This is just a really nice release. I believe that's Tyler Lockett. It might be JSN, but opens up the cornerback, slide him off his platform, went inside, Drew Locke notices, and fires the football. Here, I just wanted to highlight accuracy again. And I know I've said this a couple times. This is not consistent with his game, and, and we'll see it. But he still has the ability to do this. We've seen it, right? It's not lost on him. This football, this is defensive holding. I don't believe they called it. Eagles got away with one. But this football is still catchable for Tyler Lockett. And it is threaded on a needle with two defenders in the area. And Drew Locke put this football there. He notices Reed Blankenship, or I think it's Sidney Brown, come down aggressively, right? And he puts this football right where it could be caught, but the cornerback with a nickel is holding Tyler Lockett and gets away with it, unfortunately. And that happens sometimes. But still, good ball placement. And then here's just a nice quick game passing to now Los Angeles Ram Colby Parkinson who does a really good job just sitting down and that's another name I gotta say this Parkinson guy like I knew him because like fantasy football he would like steal touchdowns from Noah Fant and stuff like that and then I looked into this tape and I'm like yo this guy's not that bad now that contract's still pretty inflated for the Rams but he does not seem like a bad player and he yes he actually blocks his ass off too which which I do appreciate still he finds a soft spot now the football could have been out a little bit quicker but Drew Locke still notices gets the football to Parkinson, allows him to secure it, and then fall through. Let's get through some of the issues now of one Drew Locke. We're going to see when those mechanics aren't great, the football, it can it can come out a little bit inaccurate, but this football should be out right now. Drew Locke is still, he's not even going into his throwing motion, right? Like, you can see Noah Fant, the pick is made. The pick is made right here. It's exactly what you want, and that's forcing this player Number 31 to go over the top and crash down. You want the football out at this point. And Drew Locke just hold on to it too long. And by the time the football is out, Noah Fant is already passing the numbers. His head's been turned for like, what, a second and a half, two and a half seconds, whatever it is. And 31 puts himself right back into position and Locke just sails it out of bounds. So the the uh, late recognition on uh, throwing the football when there is a target that's open and not throwing with consistent anticipatory skills... These are issues with Locke. And you're going to see this happen on this play. Now, this football almost still gets in. You're going to have the, this curl route. You have a three-man route concept from the three-by-one set where the number three receiver is going to clear out. Parkinson's the number two. He's going to run to the flat. So you're going to have clear out, flat, lock. It's going to sit. And you're supposed to expand. Defender here. This defender takes homeboy. And then you have Lockett sitting in the fray. And Lockett is. Look, again, he's sitting. He's turned. There's really no one near him. He's wide open. And Locke still hasn't... Locke just gets into it at this point when... in the football's still in Locke's hands when Tyler Lockett has his feet, like, firmly planted in the ground with his hands up. Like, yo, where the hell's the football? And then Locke throws it and Kevin Byer just gets his hand on it. And still, Zip almost allowed the football to get there. Impressive enough, I get it. But you just got to be a little bit quicker with your processing. That's the difference between being a quality backup and a starting quarterback in the National Football League. On this play, I wish Locke recognized what the 49ers were doing. Look, you're going to run a fast two out in this direction. A fast two, once that happens, meaning he's going to be in motion during the snap and he's the second eligible receiver towards that side. And you see this player rotate down aggressively 
I would imagine that would tip off to a quarterback, and I'm not a quarterback, I'm just some dipshit talking right now, that you're going to have a one-on-one possibly. And if this cornerback assumes outside leverage, you could possibly win inside with this player aggressively rotating downward to match Kenneth Walker. I know my drawing isn't the best, but I'm getting used to it. Chill out, right? But Locke doesn't necessarily see it that way. And you could see right now, like, this player is going down. He is matching Kenneth Walker and outside leverage right here from this cornerback. So DK Metcalf is going to be open. And Locke initially looks in that direction. So to me, it looks like, yeah, I'm going to target DK Metcalf, but he doesn't do that. He comes off it quickly, and he looks at this side where it's going to be a three over three, and you have a deep safety, and you have this linebacker turning in that direction now that Locke oriented himself that way. But look at DK Metcalf, man. He is just sitting there. And the fact that the the fast two was incorporated in the play at least tells me that that's a tip to the quarterback. Check what Kenneth Walker's assignment is doing. And Kenneth Walker's assignment led to vacated space for DK Metcalf just to sit down. And this would have been a couple easy yards that you could have picked up, but it just wasn't it wasn't by Drew Locke. Happens, right? But you can see he's gonna he's gonna peek in that direction and get peaks, 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 just comes off it. Now, would this pass have been completed to Noah Fant if it wasn't knocked down by Nick Boser? Yeah, I said Boser, Long Island. Ugh. Not my not my favorite, but you know, sometimes I do it. Possibly, but you have two guys rallying down. It wouldn't have gone for that much. Instead, you could have got the football in DK Metcalf's hand, and you had one outside corner. If you break this cornerback's tackle right here, who knows what could have happened, right? Because you have a guy from depth way over here, and yeah, it could have been a, it could have been much better. But you live and you learn. And it ends up going incomplete anyways because it was batted down at the line of scrimmage. Now you're going to see some just – this is what gets frustrating, right? Because you saw some of the accuracy from earlier in the video. But on this play, gets his feet, you know, in position to throw this football, but he doesn't really drive it, and it ends up falling well short and goes incomplete. And it's plays like that that just frustrate you. And that's not the only time it happened either. And it happens again against the Giants right here. Just not allowing Tyler Lockett to run underneath that pass. Then we have a play like this. It's just uh, inaccurate deep passes. This is a beautiful route by, I believe that's Tyler Lockett again. Look, he absolutely torches, I think that's Avante Maddox. Stacks him on top. And there's no safety that's going to replace this safety right here, because this looks like it could be quarters, right? This safety right here is going to remain down, kind of like in a robber roll. He's going to watch the release of the number two, and the number two goes over the middle of the field, but he bites down on that. And then who do you have to cover Tyler Lockett deep to help out Avante Maddox? You have a safety who has to aggressively fly over the top like this? Like, that's that's a tough ask. That's a tough assignment for that safety. And this is a very, very uh, open receiver, and he just overthrows it. I don't know if that's because he hasn't thrown the football much in live action at Tyler Lockett, but deep accuracy is is another thing that was a little frustrating. And then just the decision-making that I was talking about. It wasn't always crisp like we've seen in some of the other plays. Like, this is this is rough. You have a three-by-one set, pistol formation, and you're going to run a double China concept, right? This is something that Brian Dable ran a ton in the red zone, especially in 2022. And you're going to try to target, I guess, Noah Fant, on uh, on the corner route, but the 49ers aren't fooled. You're throwing from the far hash, and nobody's biting on this. You have a too high shell. You can see number two just come off of it, look through the in route. This is the problem with double China routes when you're running these these off zone match type of principles. Like number two, he sees DK Metcalf go in, but he can look directly through DK Metcalf and then see what Drew Locke is doing too. So it allows number two to keep his eyes on Drew Locke to see if Drew Locke is looking over the top. So that's exactly what happens. He's seeing what Drew Locke's intentions are. And then he sees Noah Fant kind of come off on this on this, on this this uh, corner route. And the safety, look, this is the double China. If number two were to bite on DK Metcalf, this would be open. But this is a far ass throw. Like I said before, this is a tough one. And he throws it to a spot where the safety is already there to make a play on it too. And then two makes a play on it. And it's almost an interception. But it's throwing the football into an area. I get it. You're trying to target the honey hole where there are three defenders over two Seahawks. And that's something that I I, I kind of saw a lot this past year. You'll see it from this from this uh, this angle as well. Locke looks, looks, looks in that direction. Tries to get it. 
Lucky it wasn't intercepted. Now we're going to see another play where he throws into the post safety. And the wide receiver, I think that's JSN on this one, he, he beats the cornerback and he stacks the cornerback and he's open. But this is an inside release. It's all inside the hashes, right? And he ends up blowing past him. Like, that's exceptional. And I like a quarterback who's going to uncork it, right? Like That's what we want <laughs> if you're a fan of the New York Giants, someone who's going to throw it deep. But you've got that safety who is right on that hash. Now, I know what Locke is thinking. Locke is thinking that safety, you can't really see here. His hips are turned away from JSN. So he's like, I'm going to throw this football. I'm going to get JSN on this one-on-one -on -one situation with JSN sacking his cornerback and his assignment. But he's on the hash, that safety. He easily flips his hips and puts himself right in a position to make a play on this football. Was not intercepted. Like the aggressiveness, but this is something that we will see sometimes with Drew Locke. And I'm going to shorten myself so we don't see my stupid face as much as we'll see the play. Now here we got another play where it's a three over two. San Francisco 49ers, the linebacker, Dre Greenlaw. He's going to carry. He's going to robot, as they say, right? A little robot from Dre Greenlaw. Robot means roll over and back to get to your assignment. We're seeing that right here from 57. He's going to roll over, and he's going to sink underneath. And now you have a three over two. But Locke is still going to target that direction with the safety over the top. And it's just uh, not a wise move. I don't know if there was a route that was just misran here because both of these routes are in similar locations. I'm, I'm guessing that Tyler Lockett, I think that is, could be JSN, was supposed to make his route a little bit more shallow. But Greenlaw kind of cuts him off to a way where, where his route kind of intersects with DK Metcalf a little bit. Either way, this safety is on top of it the entire way, and Drew Locke just throws it directly to him. So that's a problem, I'll say. Locke sets up, gets to the far hash, plenty of time to throw, heaves it up, and it's slightly underthrown. It's to the inside, just not a not a desirable outcome for Drew Locke and his offense. Now we got one against the Rams. This is going to be an interception where it's just underthrown. And he's thrown from the far hash. This is difficult freaking throw. He's thrown from the far hash outside the numbers in a one-on-one -on -one situation against a two-high shell where the safety is going to bite down on the number two's release. So you know, you have it confirmed before you throw the football that you have a one-on-one -on -one situation. This is great coverage by this corner. I'm not sure who it is exactly. And then Lockett just can't really make a play on it because the ball is underthrown by about a yard. Far hash outside the numbers towards the sideline. Tough throw. Need to put a little bit more on it if you're if you're Drew Locke. I want to see one thing too, something I saw, and I wish I had the end zone angle here. Sometimes Locke doesn't always step into his throws to maximize his throws, and this looks like one of them. And I'm not certain if it's because Aaron Donald is crashing in. It looks like Aaron Donald is more towards the midpoint of the hashes, and Drew Locke is directly on the hash. But either way, he's not stepping into it. He's not getting as much mustard as he could on this pass. Ball dies. It does look like it definitely affected him though, so that's probably why the Aaron Donald thing, but. Again, you want to see, you know he has the arm strength. You want to see it unleashed on the football field. He's definitely somebody who does have the arm strength. I just want to show how this guy's an athlete. He's not not an athlete, right? Like the Plays like this, they're simple. Look, Eli Manning could probably run this play, but you can see that the Seattle Seahawks trust him to use his legs, trust him to use his athletic ability to get him on the move. So Locke is capable of running a play-action bootleg type of offense. The type of offense that we've seen a lot with Brian Dable since Daniel Jones was his quarterback. Locke has, I wouldn't say he's as good of an athlete as Daniel Jones, but he he's athletic enough to operate in that offense. You can see how he's able to get away from Nick Bosa here. Steps up in the pocket again, pocket management. And then he sees number five right in his face. So he gets away. And he picks up a solid gain. He's not going to be able to out run Drake Greenlaw, though, outside the numbers. That's not something he's going to be able to do, but not a lot of quarterbacks could, if we're going to be fair. But here he out runs an edge outside the numbers and picks up some yards or throws it, try to complete it. It ends up going incomplete, though, to JSN. Now against the Giants, you see him using his legs, getting him out on the run. Throws a nice pass. Dude. This is a dart right towards the sideline, but it just can't be secured as the player falls out of bounds. Cordell Flock in coverage. Now again, we're going to see Nice solid play. Tyler Lockett as well. Get him out on the run. And I know I'm running long, but before I get out of here, here's the six sacks that Drew Locke suffered. So not all of them are his fault. Some of them are just good coverage. Some of them are him trying to evade and escape in the pocket like this one. He steps up and away from, I think that's Brandon Graham, who defeats the guard. You can see he tries to step up and away, but then he runs right into another Philadelphia Eagles player. And if you look at the... 
the coverage down the football field. There's not a lot open once Drew Locke is forced to step up. He would have had JSN open on the deep route, but you know the coverage is actually pretty solid on the underneath, and he has somebody over the top, so I'm not even certain about that. And then again against the this is just a yikes moment for number 75, the guard of the Eagles. I think that's Jalen Carter too. Like Drew Locke really just doesn't have a shot to, to throw this football. If he had an extra split second, he might have been able to hit like a back shoulder to JSN up the sideline against Philadelphia, but instead he nearly gets his head taken off and he's clotheslined. It also looks like this could have possibly been a, a very nice opportunity to get the football to Kenneth Walker Jr. It doesn't look like it was a design screen, but Kenneth Walker Jr. is just sitting there, but not enough time. He tried to get it off, though. you got to respect it. Here's the third sack. Just tries to step up and evade. In this situation, maybe you would have liked for him to get the football out to Kenneth Walker Jr. You have two lead blockers out in space with Kenneth Walker Jr. That would have been a nice play, but instead he tried to use his own athletic ability and ends up getting foiled by the San Francisco 49ers. Again, tries to kind of doing a similar thing. Step up in the pocket. Aggressive pass rush. Ends up getting sacked. A lot of these sacks are kind of just at the line of scrimmage. And then there's this one where tries to extend the play. Hits his back foot. Look, Fred Warner is in the area. So it's easier said than done, but there's a throwing window here. Could you have put the football there? Sure. Am I going to hate Drew Locke for not doing that with Fred Warner with his hips oriented in that direction? And another apex defender who could work underneath and a safety over the top no i'm not gonna hate that but it's just kind of where my thought process is ends up being a sack on drew lock and that's my brief assessment of drew lock's game look there are reasons to to believe in drew lock the zip of his passes some of the accuracy that he did show throughout the throughout the 2023 season albeit it is a little bit inconsistent those are reasons to buy in i think he is a he's a solid backup to have somebody who can step in for three or four games before there's enough tape on him to exploit some of the deficiencies that he has he is prone to throwing the football in places that the football probably shouldn't go he can be a little bit inaccurate in quick game but he also can operate a quick game offense and he's athletic I think this is a good backup to Daniel Jones. I don't know if Daniel Jones is going to be the quarterback at the start of this season, if we're going to be honest, but we believe, and at least I believe, that Brian Dable would like to have an athletic quarterback, and Drew Locke is athletic enough to run an offense that Brian Dable has ran over the last two seasons. And he also has a big arm. We saw some moxie last year, like I said, in that win against the Philadelphia Eagles. So um, there you have it with Drew Locke. One year. $5 million deal guaranteed. I wonder if you could have got him for cheaper, but you know, you pay your backup quarterbacks and the quarterback situation in New York is really weird right now. We're not sure if they're going to invest in a quarterback in the draft. You have Daniel Jones who could be on the pup list for all we know. And then you have an undrafted guy named Tommy DeVito who went on a three game winning streak to put the giants at the six pick, but that's just the reality of the situation. So I'm okay with this, with this signing. I, I, um, I liked his, his game with Seattle a lot better than I liked from what I saw of his time in Denver, which was not a great situation for him. Not great tape out there. Seemed a little bit more structured with the Seattle Seahawks and had these weapons that he really relied upon. But it wasn't like they were letting him uncork it consistently. A lot of the plays, again, were behind the line of scrimmage, quick screens, just have them not kill you. And I think that's kind of the quarterback that he is, right? He can come in, he can make some plays for you, but you don't want him tossing it around the yard all the time because – Again, he can be prone to some mistakes, which will happen with backup quarterbacks, players that typically you don't want starting for you. And I think that's who Drew Locke is. But ultimately, I'm okay with this signing because I think he is competent enough to step in when asked, but he will make some mistakes. So thank you everyone for tuning in. I'm Nick Filato with Big Blue View. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of Drew Locke. Please, if you have not done so already, like and subscribe to our podcast at the Big Blue View Radio Network. And also, if you head on over to BigBlueView.com, we have a bunch of content coming out on all the new free agent acquisitions by the New York Giants and the signings. And we're all excited about Brian Burns too. So please head on over to BigBlueView.com. Thanks everyone and have a lovely day.